The Olympic flame in Tokyo. Uh, supporters see it as a symbol of renewal. The world's eyes on Japan as it inspires hope in challenging times. In fact, the flame's first stop in Japan before the torch took it over to Tokyo was specifically chosen to carry that message. It started in Fukushima Prefecture for organizers who wanted to show Japan's Olympic rebirth, a perfect starting point. But the choice was also a focal point for critics. A decade ago, Fukushima was the scene of Japan's worst nuclear disaster, the start of Japan's Olympic journey, a place with deep scars. Adrian went to Fukushima to take stock of the Olympic promise there firsthand. Adrian? Ian, there was uh, a lot of thought put into how Fukushima would play into the Olympics, how the recovery of it would. So some of the food in the athletes' village came from Fukushima. The flowers you see presented to the athletes in those medal ceremonies, they all came from Fukushima. All of those are little details designed to suggest confidence, but as always, the reality on the ground is a lot more complicated. Serenaded by the cicadas, a dream is dismantled. The barriers of baseball built to direct fans who didn't come. Now torn down even before the Olympic cauldron is turned off. And that is Fukushima's Olympic story all dressed up to show the world its recovery, but no one able to see it. And yes, people seem as deflated as the streets are quiet. I was looking forward to many people from many countries visiting here and interacting with them. So I'm disappointed. Consider what they've been through. It was a decade ago that Fukushima was dealt a staggering blow. An earthquake so strong it pushed the sea floor up 16 stories. A tsunami that killed so many and washed away entire villages also flooded the nuclear plant. Unable to keep reactors cool, it exploded. And when that radioactive cloud moved north, 150,000 people in the way moved out. Only a small percentage have come back. Those returning to the once abandoned Tate village find Nobuyoshi Ito waiting. He stayed thinking he could help with cleanup and monitor the radiation. What he sees still makes him mad. So you don't want people to come back here? Yes, that's right. The government has to declare this as a place where people should not live. The trouble is trust. He insists the government has been downplaying risks from moment one. So he collects soil samples from farms, from the woods, from his own yard, and he still sees danger. While there's always background radiation, no matter where you are, when numbers climb next to the soil, it is, he says, proof contamination lingers, and too much of it in his mind. It will take 300 years to restore the village to its original state and it will continue to emit radiation for 300 years. So the reality is that no matter how much money we spend on reconstruction from the nuclear accident, it will never be the same. But Japan is spending. It's one of the world's most expensive restoration projects. Sports complexes, hotels, incentives offered to those who return. Radiation level signs are posted everywhere. They're meant to reassure. Often they don't. Neither do scenes like this. The frozen in time world of Futaba, just four and a half kilometers from the stricken nuclear plant. A place where calendars and clocks are stuck on the moment disaster struck. Homes and workplaces fled in an instant, untouched in a decade. Some of Futaba is being rebuilt, but not all. Just as some of nearby Tomioka is ready for returnees, but definitely not all. The warnings outside one housing complex declare it's a no-go zone. It is not at all hard to have empathy for the people of Fukushima when they say they're not sure what is and is not safe. We're in an exclusion zone. The area behind these gates is totally cut off, the parking lot overgrown, the homes abandoned. This feels like a ghost town, but across the street, it's okay. The lights are on and somebody's home. There are lots of contradictions. 
the rice paddies flourishing alongside fields now stacked with hundreds of thousands of bags of contaminated radiated soil. It's a cruel crop sprouting all over Fukushima. A permanent location for all of it may be 25 years away at least. Until then, the sight unnerves. As do they, the feral boar who moved in when people left. They bred with domesticated pigs and roamed freely over radiated earth. They have to be hunted before it's safe for humans to go back. Those that lurk still are a threat for farmers trying to make a go of it. Are they a problem, the wild boar? Yes, every time. Because uh, uh, once uh, farmers come back here and uh, grow the uh, agriculture product, uh, especially just before harvesting, yeah. wild boar come. The boar can be managed. The fear is harder. Which is why farmer Muneo Kano, an agricultural scientist, Mizaro Mizoguchi, wanted to show off the vegetables. They've learned to grow them safely, test the food and soil consistently. So you, you believe the food is safe? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm always uh, su surprising, <laughs> surprised. Uh, all people don't believe that th this kind of fruits or uh, vegetable fruit are safe. Right. Did you not believe it at first? Were you worried at first? No. Uh, I am the soil scientist, mm -hmm. so uh, I understand uh, what, what uh, occurs in the fields. Uh, just after the earthquake. Those with questions are showered with test results and documents. And while few residents have returned and most are elderly, he wants others to know he thinks it's okay to do so. This comfort makes him unusual though, and it's costing relationships. Mizoguchi used to be closer with Nobuyoshi Ito. Now their dueling data has pulled them apart. When you hear uh, Tokyo 2020 talk about the recovery Olympics. What do you think when you hear that? It is all lies and deceit, isn't it? Because is anyone recovering? Itate village had 6,500 people before the accident, but only 1,400 have returned. What happened to the others? It's only when those people return that you can say things have recovered. Tokyo 2020 didn't get to shine a spotlight for the world on Fukushima. Those still here just want to make sure when the Olympics are done, the work doesn't disappear too. So it is a beautiful part of the world. And when we were in Fukushima City, we were approached by a lot of people who talked about how disappointed they were, they, how they wanted to mingle with the rest of the world. You know, the volunteers in particular who had wanted to sign up as a way of saying thank you to everyone who supported them were especially sad to be told they just weren't needed anymore. Ian? 